Hello everybody, it's Steve Williams with TheCreditRepairShop.com. I'm making this video here and uh, we're going to talk about dealing with frustration because the credit repair process has a lot of frustration built into it it's because that's the way the system is. Anytime you're trying to fix or correct issues that uh, either were brought up by what you did in the past from past mistakes or from what other people have done to you uh, in cases such as ID, theft, and uh, or overbilling of accounts, or duplicating of accounts, or uh, multiple inquiries. Uh, to give you an example, like when we see a car dealer shop do a multiple shop out of your credit with a whole bunch of different lenders, and you have too much information on your report that really should not be there. But let's first talk about the uh, credit repair process on how to deal with that frustration. And then we're gonna talk about some other things because I believe that everything is connected in life when it comes to frustration. Uh, people can get upset about, could get upset with someone else or with, with, with another individual solely because of something that happened in another situation. So let's talk about how to deal with frustration real quick. So we got first here, look at my notes. When, when going through the credit repair process, for some reason, I don't know why, but some people do not understand that the law requires that specific data has to be uh, prepared and given to the bureaus to be able to even perform uh, credit the credit repair process. And some people get frustrated with that because they just believe that if you sign up for credit repair that the credit repair company already has all that information. That is not true. You must provide the data to us, and w w if you sign up with us, you'll know what that data is. It's not nothing hard. It's basically proving your identity, so we're not, try you know, so it, it, there's no mistakes made on, on uh, whose credit is being looked at. So data is number one. Number two is the review of all of that data, the reports. Review of the ID, the, the ID information that's provided. Review of the addresses that are provided. Uh, review of all the three credit reports, the scores. That has to be reviewed so we can know where to move forward and what has to be done. That has to be done. Some people get frustrated with providing that information. They believe that that information is out there for everybody to see, and that is not true. Uh, you know, you have to get your credit reports and you have to provide your credit reports to be able to have them reviewed to go through the process. The next one is dispute. Dispute and validation. The, the, a lot of people get uh, upset with this part here too because they uh, they don't understand that there's a process that has to be performed and there's a dispute process and a validation process uh, when you are looking to get your credit repaired. And these two, once, it, once these two are done, it can take 30 to 45 days for that information to come back. And that is something that is out of the hands of every credit repair company. That it goes into the hands of the credit uh, agencies. And remember, they're getting millions of letters each and every week requesting reviews. And so the law, Congress, gives them 30 to 45 days. Now, another big piece of the frustration that people go through is that they don't understand that, number one, just because one bureau comes to a decision on 
a certain item that's on the credit report, they believe that the other bureau has to come to the same conclusion. That is not true. The facts are the same, but each bureau is going to do their own investigation. And what we found from doing thousands of customers is that some of the times when you send it in, they actually really don't investigate it. And that's what makes us have to do continuous follow-up. Anything you do in life, Anything that you do that's going to get results is going to have to have a lot of follow-up until it's done. And a lot of people get frustrated because they don't understand why if something wasn't true or why if something was being corrected that each bureau didn't correct it either on the first time, the second time, or even sometimes the third time. You have to do the follow-up. And I tell my customers, what you have to do is be focused on the big goal. If you're focused on the big goal, because no matter what, we have one month, 12 months, and you have all these months in between. No matter what, in the end, time is going to go by. So you might as well uh, maximize your time. And when... That and, and we're going to go into some other stuff, what I'm going to talk about with life, but when we're talking about with credit repair, the process, let the process work because no matter what, time is not going to stand still, so you need to maximize the time. And what I mean maximize the time is get everything out of the way that you don't control to be able to get your credit repair process started and then allow the follow-up to continue, and then at some point, the follow-up will will either bear the result that you want or it will bear another uh, avenue that has to be followed to get to the goal that you want. And that's what we specialize in as a company is we do this and we do the follow-up until there's a certain point to where the follow-up will not work with just doing this is that we move you into a different phase with our company and a hundred percent of the time if you follow through with the final phase of what we do for everyone's credit repair process i guarantee a hundred percent success if you follow through with that now but what i think also is a big part of frustration is that people are dealing, dealing with life. And when we deal with life, we're dealing with work, we're dealing with family, and we're dealing with paying those dang bills. That's a major frustration with everyone because while you're trying to work on your credit, while you're trying to, uh, you know, pr progress through life, all of these things are happening to you. And some people, solely, they just don't, don't like their job. And what I tell people to do is if you don't like your job, you need to start planning to get out of that job. And when I say planning, that doesn't mean play around and pretend and complain. I mean you need to start planning on how to get out of that job. If you don't like the people that you're working around, you need to start planning to get out of that. And But what most people do and what keeps them frustrated is that they just keep thinking about what they don't like instead of putting a plan in action and working a plan. Whenever... I get frustrated. I don't focus on the frustration of or what get, got me frustrated. I focus on the solutions to minimizing the frustration, the solutions to dealing with the frustrations. The next part is with family. You know, you, you got the kids, your spouse, if you're married, other family members. 
you have to learn to deal with the frustration in a productive manner. And that means that you have to talk with them and you have to express yourself in a manner that is not going to continually uh, disrupt the family environment. And I'm not uh, some type of professional on this, but I could just tell you that I have to be doing some things right because I've been married now going on 28 years and most marriages are not even lasting that long. I was married at the age of 20 and uh, at the age of 20. So uh, most people that got married at that age are not married now. And so I have to be doing some things right. And also I uh, raised all of my children. I was always at home with my children. So I have to be doing something right and always at home with my wife and we uh, ate dinner and we go places together still to this day every weekend uh, I might play golf in the morning but after that I'm with my wife and I believe that that's how you're gonna have uh, a family that is gonna stay together and that's gonna grow together and be together so whatever you're doing you need to reevaluate what's going on with your family life and you need to not be afraid to look at yourself in the mirror and say, are you doing your best for your family? And you only can control what you do. You can't control what other people in your family do, even with your children. And basically with your children, if they are acting out, they're basically acting out because they see problems with what's going on with the family. And that, that's what I've seen over time when I look at other families or, or uh, people and uh, relatives of mine is that the kids are acting out because of what they're seeing with the parents. If the parent comes home upset because of their job and they're talking about uh, they don't like being around the people that they work with and they, they cuss out, you know, they uh, are swearing in the house and uh, getting upset and just yelling or whatever, uh, the kids relate that to people in school that they don't like. And so they act out the same way, even though it's not a job. They're going to act out that same type of way that they see the parent acting out. And then if they don't see the, the two parents getting along, they're going to act out again the way that they see their parents acting. They're going to act out that way in school or around their friends. And it, it's just like a learned pattern of behavior. The next one, let's talk about bills. So you, have, you might have a mortgage, rent or mortgage, car payments, credit cards, student loans, whatever, payday loans, whatever, you know. Uh, what I always tell people to do is that if you're gonna plan, like credit repair is part of your plan. Credit repair is, is part of your plan. But the other side of your plan in the credit repair process has to be getting your bills in, in a budget under control for your household. Now, uh, certain bills like collections and stuff like that can be taken care of in the credit repair process if they're not validated and that would lower your, uh, your debt ratio. But still, you're going to, you're going to have certain bills always with you, your, your utilities, your, your, uh, rent or mortgage or car payment, your credit card, student loan, whatever. You're going to always have certain bills. So you're going to have to learn how to budget. And, and you, a lot of you probably saying right now, I don't even make enough money to budget to pay this stuff. I'm barely getting by. So what I always tell people to do, and this is what me and my wife did years ago when we ran into financial trouble, is that you're going to have to write down all of your, your bills. All of your bills, I mean utilities, cable, rent, if you rent or your mortgage, everything, write it down on a piece of paper and you're going to have to start slashing and put the amount that you pay or, or the amount that you're supposed to pay each month and you're going to have to start slashing, 
stuff off. So if you got uh, cable, and a lot of people don't do this because they don't think that it's going to work, that it's going to make any difference, but it really does make a difference. And I'm here to tell you it made a difference for me when I was a young person that was struggling uh, and not able to pay all of our bills. So you got your cable bills. You might have uh, uh, car number one, car number two. And in my case, we had uh, over four vehicles. Uh, you might have a credit card, one, well, two, because you got one here, two, three. Uh, you might have uh, what? We, well, you have your utilities, water. This could be electric. Uh, whatever. Write all of that stuff down and then put a dollar amount for all of that stuff. And now let me show you a way. Because people always say, well, Steve, I, I, when I wrote, wrote all of that stuff down, I didn't even have, I don't have enough money to pay all of this stuff. That's why I don't even want to write it down. Because then it's going to really show me I don't have uh, the money to pay for all of this. But what I tell people to do, write it all down. And then you start crossing off stuff that you're going to have to get rid of. When when I ran into financial trouble, we had to uh, give back a couple of cards. We were like, we're going to give them back, come take them. We'll, uh, we'll uh, do a settlement to uh, pay the difference on what after you sell it at auction, whatever. Uh, get rid of credit cards. We had gas cards, all types of stuff. Get rid of that stuff. Get rid of it. And so you can start to start over. And then something that you could do, and a lot of people don't take advantage of this, is that you can get deferments on, so if you have a mortgage, ask for three to six month deferment. That's where they won't, they'll put your payments on the back end of your mortgage and allow you a time frame to kind of get caught up on some bills. Do that with your car. So we had a, the mortgage, we had a car, it depends on your loan. They'll give you a certain amount of period of time to do that. Uh, ask for it on your cards. Uh, student loan, if you're not behind. Or it, some people haven't been paying it, but if you're not behind, ask for that. Same with this, three to six. You still have to pay all of these utility water and all that stuff. But try to get deferments on all as many payments as you can get. And then with that money, what you do is, let's just say, for instance, that your mortgage is $1,200 a month. So you got that deferment car payment. Let's just say $300 for that one. This credit card was $100. Uh, this, uh, the student loan, say you were paying $200 a month. That credit card is $100. And that credit card is $100. So we're looking at, we got $1,215, $1,617, $1,18. Now, we got $2,000 times, let's just say that they only did it for three months. So you got $6,000. We got that math right. We got three at five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we've got 2000 So you got $6,000 that you could use to pay down bills. You could probably pay off the credit cards, get them out the way. Uh, close out all of them except for one. Uh, your credit score will go down when you do that, but what does it matter when you can't pay your bills uh, to have a big credit score? So what you do is you close it, let the score drop down. It's going to bounce back up. Keep one card and don't charge that card for more than 40% uh, of its balance at any time. Uh, don't use that card for emergencies. You're going to put an emergency fund up with the 6,000, so you're gonna keep, you're gonna pay bills with the 5,000, and you're gonna put 1,000 away for your emergency fund. And then, and then what you're gonna do is you can pay, uh, once you have this money here, you can pay off debt, and that should be able to realign you back to where you're in a, in a position to where you can pay all of your bills. And, this is something that we did. Uh, I remember when my wife and I did it in 1994. This is similar to what we were going through, and we got deferments, 
And by the time we got the deferment, I believe at that time it was three months, by the time we got those deferments, we were able to get uh, a lot of stuff paid off, and we did actually give uh, some vehicles back. And by doing that in conjunction, uh, you know, do, by doing that and also it, with doing the deferments, we were able to get ourselves back into a budget line, and then from that, it relieved the frustration, and we were able to move forward. And one thing that we did learn from that is that we never ever after we worked our way out of that situation we never got ourselves put back into that situation so this is uh i think that we've covered everything let me look at my notes yeah we covered everything so when it comes to dealing with frustration especially in the credit repair process uh just from my experience i believe that a lot of people when they get frustrated with us or they get frustrated with themselves it's not really 100% about the credit repair process. It's because of what they're dealing with with their entire life. So what I'm here to tell you is if you get frustrated again, pull out this video and you uh, continually watch it over and over and over and it'll show you that action when you're, when you're frustrated, if you take action on solutions, it will relieve the frustrations. But if you only, if you, uh, only think about what you're getting frustrated about you're going to get more and more frustrated and it's not going to do you any good all right until next time this is steve williams with the credit repair shop